Hello everyone. In this session, I am going to explain the literary term starting with letter E. The first literary term is addition. In present usage, designates the total copies of a book that are printed from a single setting of type or other mode of reproduction. The various printings or reprints of an addition, sometimes with some minor changes in the text, may be spaced over a period of years. We now identify as a new edition, a printing, in which substantial changes have been made in the text. A text may be revised and reprinted in this way many times. Hence, the term second edition, third edition, fourth edition, etc. are came into the usage. A varium edition designates either an addition of a work that lists all the textual variants in an author's manuscript and revision of the printed text for example the varium edition of the poems of w b eats peter lord and russell k or else an addition of a text that includes a selection of annotations and commentaries on the text by previous editors and critics the term varium is just short form of a latin cum notis varium it means with the annotation of various persons the new varium edition of shakespeare still in process is a varium edition in both senses of the word the term incunabula it signifies all the books that were produced in the infancy of printing the word incubula is a latin word for swaddling clothes the terminal date is 1500 about 50 years after the german printer john gutenberg invented movable printing type the next literary term is allegory in greek and roman literature allegory denoted any poem written in allegoric meter Uh, alternating hexameter and pentameter lines the term was also used however to refer to the subject matter of change and loss frequently expressed in the allegoric verse from especially in the complain about love in accordance with this latter usage the vandran the seafarer and other poems in old english on the transcendence of all worldly things are even now called allegories in europe and england the word continued to have a variable application through the renaissance john dunn's allegories written in the late 16th and early 17th century a love poem also they relate to the sense of allegory as lament in that many of them emphasizes mutability and loss in 17th century the term allegory began to be limited to its most common present usage a formal and sustained lament in words for the death of a particular person usually ending in a consolation for example mandeville poem the pearl and chaucer's book of duchess these are the allegories in the mode of dream allegory the dark is also a versified expression of grief on the occasion of a particular person's death but differ from the allegory in that it is short is less for formal and is usually represented as a text to be sung for example shakespeare's full fathom five thy father lies and william collins a song from shakespeare's gimbal an important sub type of the allegory is the pastoral allegory which represent both the poet and the one he mourns who is usually also a poet as shepherd the latin word for shepherd is pastor this poetic form was originated by the sicilian greek poet Theocrates was continued by Roman Virgil was developed in various European countries during the Renaissance and remained current in English poetry throughout the 19th century 
Notable English pastoral elegies are Spencer's Astrophel on the death of Sir Philip Sidney, which was published in 1595, Milton's Leucides, which was published in 1638, Shelley's Adonis, which was published in 1821, and in the Victorian age, and Lord's Thyrises. The pastoral elegies from the Greek through the Renaissance developed a set of elaborate conventions which are illustrated here by reference to Lucidus. The next literary term is empathy and sympathy. The German theorist in the 19th century developed the concept of feeling into which has been translated as empathy. It signifies the identification of oneself with an observed person or object which is so close that one seems to participate in the posture, motion and sensation that one observes. Empathy is often described as an involuntary projection of ourself into an object and is commonly explained as the result of an inner mimicry that is the observation of an object evokes incipient muscular movement which are not experienced as one's own sensation but as through they were attributes of our outer object the object may be human or non-human or even inanimate in thoroughly absorbed contemplation we seem empathically to prod with a ballet dancer soar with a hawk bend with the movements of a tree in the wind and even share the strength ease and grace with which a well-proportioned arc appears to sport a bridge in literature we call empathic a passage which conspicuously evokes from the reader this sense of participation with the prose movement and physical sensation of the object that the passage describes. The best example is Shakespeare's Venus and Adonis, which was published in 1593. Sympathy is distinguished from empathy, denotes fellow feeling, that is, not feeling into the physical state and sensation but feeling along with the mental state and emotion of another human being or of non-human being to whom we attribute human emotions. We sympathize, for example, with the emotional experience of a child in his first attempt to recite a piece in public. We may also emphasize as he falters in his speaking or makes an awkward gesture. For example, Robert Burns to a Mouse, which was published in 1786. The next literary term is Enlightenment. The name applied to an intellectual movement and cultural ambition which developed in Western Europe during the 17th century and reached its height in 18th. The common element was a trust in human reason as adequate to solve the crucial problems and to establish the essential norms in life. Together with the belief that the application of reason was rapidly dissipating the darkness of superstitious preachers and was freeing humanity from its earlier reliance or mere authority and unexamined tradition and had opened the prospect of progress toward a life in this world of universal peace and happiness. For some thinkers, the model for reason was the inductive procedure of science, which produced by reasoning from the facts of experience to general laws. For others, the model for reason was primarily geometrical, the deduction of particular truth from clear and distinct ideas which are known intuitively by the light of reason. Many thinkers relied on reason in both these sense. The next literary term is epic. In its strict sense, the term epic or heroic poem 
is applied to a work uh, that means at least the following criteria it is a long verse narrative on a serious subject told in a formal and elevated style and centered on a heroic or quasi divine figure on whose actions depend the fate of a tribe a nation or the human race there is a standard distinction between traditional and literary epics traditional epics are also called folk epics or primary epics were written verses of what had originally been oral poems about a tribal or national hero during a war like age among these are the iliad and odyssey that the greeks ascribed to homer the anglo saxon beowulf the french chaucer de roland and the spanish puma del cid in the 12th century and the 13th century german epic literary epics were composed by individual poetic craftsmen in deliberate imitation of the traditional form of this kind is virgil's latin poem the aeneid which later served as the chief model for milton's literary epic paradise lost which was published in 1667 Literary epics are highly conventional compositions which usually share the following features derived by the way of an aid from the traditional epics of Homer the first is the hero is a figure of great national or even cosmic importance the second is the setting of the poem is ample in scale and may be worldwide or even larger the third is the action involves superhuman deeds in battle such as achilles feat in the trojan war the fourth is in these great actions the gods and other supernatural beings take an interest on an active part the fifth is an epic poem is a ceremonial performance and is narrated in a ceremonial style which is deliberately distinct from ordinary speech and proportion to the grandeur and formality of the heroic subject and architecture hence milton's grand style his formal diction and elaborate and stylish syntax which are often modeled in on latin poetry the term epic is often applied by extension to narrative which differ in many respect from this model but manifest the epic spirit and grandeur in the scale the scope and the profound human importance of their subject the next literary term is epic simile they are the formal sustained simile in which the secondary subject or vehicle is elaborated far beyond its specific points of close parallel to the primary subject or tenor to which it is compared this figure was imitated by homer by virgil milton and other writers of literary epics the next literary term is epic theater the term that the german playwright bartold brecht in the 1920s applied to his play by the word epic brecht signified primarily his attempt to emulate on the stage the objectivity of the narration in homeric epic by employing a detached narrator and other devices to achieve alienation effects brecht aimed to subvert the sympathy of the audience with the actors and the identification of the actor with his role that were features of the later theater of burgess realism his hope was to encourage his audience to criticize and oppose rather than passively to accept the social conditions and modes of behavior that the plays represent the next literary term is epigram the term is now used for a statement whether in prose or verse which is terse pointed and witty
the epigram may be on the any subject uh, allegies meditative complimentary or most often satirical marital and the roman epigrammatists established the enduring model for the casualitically satiric epigram in verse the next literary term is epiphany which means a manifestation or showing forth by the christian thinkers was used to signify a manifestation of god's presence within the created world for example the portrait of artist as a young man which was published in 1944 the next literary term is epithalamian or the latin form epithalamium is a poem written to celebrate a marriage among its classical practitioner were the greeks sappho and theocrates and the romans ovid and catullus the term in greek means at the bridal chamber since the words were originally written to be sung outside the bedroom of a newly married couple the form flourished among the new latin poets of the renaissance who established the model that was followed by writers in the european vernacular languages sir philip sidney wrote the first english instance in about 1580 and 15 years later edmund spenser wrote his great lyric epithalamium a celebration of his own marriage that he composed as a very wedding gift to his bride the next literary term is epithet it is a term in criticism uh, that denotes an adjective or adjectival phrase used to define a distinctive quality of a person or thing an example is john keats silver snailing tramps and in the eve of saint agnes the term is also applied to an identified phrase that stand in place of a noun the next is homeric epic they are the adjectival terms usually a compound of two words like those which homer in his epic poems used as a recurrent formulas and referring to be a distinctive feature of someone or something the next literary term is essay any short composition in prose that undertake to discuss a matter express a point of view persuade us to accept a thesis on any subject or simply entertain the essay differ from a treatise or dissertation in its lack of pretension to be a systematic and complete exposition and in being addressed to a general rather than a specialized audience as a consequence the essay discusses subject in non technical fashion and often with a liberal use of such devices as anecdote striking illustration and humor to augment its appeal the next literary term is euphemism an inoffensive expression used in place of a blunt one that is felt to be disagreeable or embarrassing the next literary term is euphony and cacophony euphony is a term applied to a language which strikes the ear as smooth pleasant and musical and similarly cacophony or dissonance language which is perceived as harsh rough and unmusical the next literary term is euphemism uh, it elaborates prose style which had a vogue in the 1580s in drama prose fiction and probably also in the conversation of english court circle the style is sententious relies persistently on sentimental balance and antithesis reinforces the structural parallels by having an elaborate pattern of alliteration and assonance exploit the rhetorical question and is addicted to long similes and learned allusion 
which are often drawn from mythological and the habit of legendary animals for example philots and the shakespeare's parodied the next literary term is expressionism it is a german moment in literature and the other art which was as it height between 1910 and 1925 that is in the period just before during and after world war 1 its chief precursor were artists and writer who had in various ways departed from realistic depiction of our life and the world by incorporating in their art visionary or powerful emotional state of mind that are expressed and transmitted by means of distorted representation of the outer world expressionism itself was never a concerted or well defined movement it can be said that its central feature is a revolt against the artistic and literary tradition of realism both in subject matter and in style so that's all for today's session thank you so much for listening so carefully